going to be talking about correlation, covariance, and regression. Uh, so let's take a look at how we can do that. We can go back to our data analysis. We can choose, we'll start with correlation here and hit OK. Now it's going to want to know our input rows. So again, our specified B1 to C108. I've noted that the first um, row is the labels. I'm going to get output on a new worksheet. And now I can hit OK. Here's my new worksheet. And this value right here is Pearson's R, okay, which is our correlation coefficient, Pearson's R, okay. So we could also get this if we wanted to by simply doing in Excel equals coral, okay, and we choose our array. So here our first array is going to be B2 through B108. Those were our values, right? And our second array would be C2 through C108, which are our other values. So here we see that Pearson's R, we get 5, 2, 4, 7, which matches our output here. So we see that they're doing the same thing, and you can choose which way you want to do it. So we can rename this now as our correlation. Okay, we can go back to run covariance, uh, and we can also run our regression through this. So here's covariance option. Okay, covariance, again, it wants our input range. So we can choose that we're going to run B1 to C108, those were our, we need our labels in the first row. If we're going to include the first row, again, group by columns. It's going to put the output on a new sheet, and there it is. Here are our covariance values. So we can automatically get covariance just like that. And lastly, we can do our regression in data analysis. So if we go in here, we have regression. We hit OK. It wants to know your Y and your X variables. You have to specify them specifically here. Okay. So I'm going to, X is always your predictor variable and Y is always your outcome. That's the rule in statistics. So here for X, I've chosen my B, which is saying that I'm using stress to predict symptoms that people are experiencing because I think that's the way the relationship makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to put the output on a new worksheet. I want to get confidence intervals at 95%. We'll talk about those a little bit more. And we can go ahead and run that analysis. Here we get what looks like a much larger output. But this is something that we'll work on interpreting more in class. So as you can see, we have run our entire regression just that quick and easily. And this tells us all the output that we'll need for our Chapter 9 homeworks. So we're going to rename that regression. And so there we've been able to do every single type of analysis. Now we can also do like plot types. So here you go histogram, right? So we can get a histogram for data and we can choose what we want for our input range. Now here it wants bin range. So you've got to also decide, well, what kind of width do we want? So we can look back and decide our width by looking at our descriptive statistics, getting an idea of our range. So here for stress, you know, we got a range of 57, so 1 to 58. So it would be reasonable maybe to do bins of size 5, 2, depending on how many you want. You could do bins of a size 1, and you would just get that many more bars. So we can take a look at what that would be, but we would need to specify our values. So we can specify our values for our bins by writing, making a new column here. That's going to be bin, and we could have bins of width 5, just like this. We can drag through to take it to our maximum point. So make sure, notice our maximum was 58. So we had made sure that our bins went all the way past our highest number here. And so now we can do our histogram because we can select the input range is going to be for stress right, which is B1 to B108, and the bin range is going to be E2 through E13. Going to be on a new worksheet again, okay. You can get cumulative percentages, you can get the Pareto charts we talked about, all those things are available here, just that quick and easy if you want to have them done for you automatically. So there you go we have a frequency table constructed for us